Hi everybody, it's Catherine from In The Pink Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Everything that I use today you can purchase from Stampin' Up! through me at the address at the top of the screen. And if you're new here, hello and thank you for watching and please subscribe. Okay, um, I'm sorry about the shaking of my camera. Whenever I move in my seat, it shakes my desk, but soon I'm going to be moving into the basement, so I'm going to have a little bit of a different setup. Okay, so my project today is this box that right now I have a mini pumpkin, Reese's Peanut Butter Pumpkin. Um, they come in a bag like this, I think, for $2.99, and there's a bunch in here. There's 18 in here, so 18 gifts would be pretty good for three bucks plus your supplies. Alrighty, so the box measures three by two by three quarters. Alrighty, and I use the cutest Halloween stamp set along with the cute Halloween paper. Um, the frightful label die, frightful tags dies, the seasonal label dies for this in here, um, layering circle dies, and f also the frightfully cute stamp set for this uh, sentiment. Alrighty, now you can get two of these out of one sheet of, of cardstock, so that's a good deal too, and you'll even have some left over. Um, so it's kind of on the economical side to make. Let me show you what we need. Now, we need a piece of gorgeous grape that is seven and a half by four and a half. We need a strip of basic white for stamping. Now this label, I stamped the frightfully cute sentiment onto the Regal's designer series paper and then I cut it and this label is from the seasonal label dies but I usually stamp it and then I cut it out because it's a this is a um, it's a red stamp it's a cling stamp so I have a hard time seeing which is straight with these even I tried all the tips but I'd rather just stamp the sentiments and cut it out after and then I can reasonably be sure that I have it straight. Alrighty, so we need this circle is one and three eighths. This is from the fright, Frightful Tag dies. Okay, but it also, I, I'm starting to think that there's a dupe for this in the, the layering circle dies because this little um, scallop fits around it perfect. So this is out of the cute Halloween designer series paper. This is out of uh, basic black. Also from the Frightful Tags dies, I have this label from Gorgeous Grape. And then from the Regals designer series paper, I have three pieces that are two and three quarters by one and three quarters. All right, and that's all we need. Okay, we're going to start with our seven and a half by four and a half inch piece of cardstock, gorgeous grape, and I'm going to get my simply scored, and we're going to start. I have one of the backs in there. We're going to start on the seven and a half inch side. And we're going to score at two, two and three quarters, four and three quarters, and five and a half. Okay, now we're going to turn it to the four and a half inch side and we're going to score at three quarters and at three and three quarters. All right, and that's it. Now I'm going to fold and burnish. Remember, um, you have three more weeks of celebration, which is free items for every $50 you, dollars you spend. And if you would like to join my team, you get um, the regular joining bonus, which is $125 worth of products that you pick for $99 with free shipping. Plus, because it's celebration, you get a free bundle. All right. Now, there is two-inch strips Two inch, there's three two inch rectangles here, two inches this way. 
Okay, so we can start on either end. All right, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, so this will go either way. So it's not a big deal if you start one side and do the tabs differently. Oops, where's my tab? There it is. All righty. So we're going to start with this in portrait mode, okay? And we're going to start on the bottom left, and we're going to go in one score line, and we're going to cut up to the second score line, okay? Then we're going to take off this lower rectangle here, and then we just have the square left, and we're going to wedge each side of the square. Okay, so that's what we did so far. Now we're going to move on to the other side of this is our front flap, and we're going to go to this score line here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut all the way up to the second one. We're going to get rid of this lower rectangle. And then we're going to wedge a little bit off each side of the square. Okay, so that's what we have that way. Now we're going to turn it so that our flap is on the right hand side. And what we have is a rectangle, a square, and a rectangle. And we're going to cut up to the first score line there on each side of the rectangle straight and then that leaves this square in the middle free and we're going to just wedge a little bit out of each side of the square. Okay, so that's what we have. Now we're going to turn it 180 so that our flap is on the left hand side and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut the edges of our two small rectangles straight and then wedge the sides of the square in the middle. Okay, and that's all the cutting. Now we just need our detailed trio punch and we're going to round the corners of our flap. Okay, so this is what your cardstock should look like after you've scored it, cut it, and rounded the corners here. Okay, so now we want to get our tear and tape. And what we want to do is we want to take these tabs here and attach them to the inside of this rectangle that's attached to the flat. Okay, so we're going to flip it with the inside down. Okay, so this is the part that closes like this. Okay, and we're going to put a little bit of tear and tape on each of these tabs and this just keeps the tabs out of our way and it keeps the box from opening up at the bottom too like it won't gap all right and I'm going to take the backing off okay and what we want to do is we want to take this line at the, the bottom of the tab and make it straight with this bottom of the rectangle here okay so you just fold that over, and there, that's what it should look like. Okay, now we're going to go on to this side, and remember, you're always attaching it to the part that has the flap, and take the bottom of there, and put it straight with the bottom of this rectangle over here. Okay, almost finished here. Now, we're going to put tear and tape on the inside of these two rectangles here, and we're going to put it close to the edge. Okay, just like that. See, it's this. It's what's left not attached to the flap. And then I'm going to take the backing off of these. We're going to fold it up, and we want this edge and this edge to match up as long as this, as well as this edge with the bottom. All right, so we're going to just close it and make sure that it's nice and even. And we're going to go to this side and make sure that the bottom and this back here is nicely together. Okay, and that is the box. 
Now, of course, you could decorate this however you'd like, but we're going to do it just like this one. I used the pumpkin out of these three. Number one, it is my favorite, although I do like the kitty too. Um, but since I put the peanut butter pumpkin in here, I figured that would be good. Alrighty, but I'm going to show you when we are finished everything else that will fit in here too. Okay, so now we're going to need our designer series paper. And remember, this is three pieces that are two and three quarters by one and three quarters. And one of them is going to be going here. So we want to round one edge, both sides of one of the, ed the long edges. Okay, and then I'm going to get my liquid glue. And I'm going to attach this to the front flap. And there should be about an eighth of an inch border all around. Okay, as well as getting um, an entire two boxes in in, out of one sheet of cardstock, you will get also two boxes worth of DSP out of one six by six sheet. All right. Okay, now this one's going to go right in here. And if you decide not to do the back, you can get another box out of it, or almost another box, let's say. And then one on the back. Yeah, you should be able to, because then you would only need two, and you would be able to get them all out of one. That's our DSP. Okay, and we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, we're going to do a little stamping. And we need our strip of basic white. Let me see. I got a little ink on that. Okay, and we're going to be using the outline of the pumpkin, the inside of the pumpkin, the smiley face, and the cheeks. So there's these four stamps here. Alrighty, so first we need some tuxedo black, and I'm going to do the outline. Good. And also from the Frightfully Cute stamp set, Frightfully Cute, and that I just used Memento Tuxedo Black and I put it, actually I put it on a piece of cardstock and then I cut it with the small die from the seasonal label dies. All right, so now we're done with the Tuxedo Black. Now we want pumpkin pie and we're gonna fill in our pumpkin. I missed a little at the bottom, but that's okay. No big deal. All right, and then we need the tuxedo black again for the face. There we go. And then for the cheeks, which is this little dot, oops, which is right here next to the face, I'm going to use flirty flamingo ink. And I'm going to put one right next to the edge of each side of the smile. Okay. All right. And then we just need our Halloween punch, and we're going to be using the pumpkin one. And you see, that's bothering me a little bit. So I'm going to get my pumpkin pie blend, and I'm just going to color it. 
and the look it looks a little darker but it might lighten up but it'll look like a little shadow under there so things like that are very easy to fix lots of times all right so there's our pumpkin now we need this is also the same DSP it's the cute cute Halloween DSP the circle is from the frightful tag dies and the scallop circle is from the layering circle dies and we're gonna glue them together okay and then we're going to glue it onto our gorgeous great label from frightful tag dies also I'm just going to put it right in the middle. There we go. Okay. And now, while all of that dries, what we're going to do is we're going to put a adhesive Velcro dot on there. Now, I have the 5 eighths inch. So I'm just going to, I cut them in half, and I'm going to use half of one. I got mine, you can get them, I think I got mine from walmart.com, but you can get them from Amazon too. Just um, put in adhesive Velcro dots, you can put 3 8 or 5 8 inch. Usually if you put adhesive Velcro dots, it'll come up with a bunch of different sizes for you. Okay, now I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to put it on top with the adhesive facing me and then I'm going to just make sure that my box closes nice and evenly that it's not off kilter and then I'm going to gently press down and then just gently pull up and then you can press it better when you have it off Sometimes if your DSP didn't get glue all the way to the edge, this might pull up. You can just stick a little more glue under there. All right, so we're done with that now. And now we're going to take our frightfully cute sentiment and we're going to glue it on the inside. And I got a, um, such a nice lady today gave sent me an email, or yesterday now, asking me, for a size box to fit um, some ring bath bombs that she makes. And if anyone needs something, if I can possibly do it, if I can figure it out, I'm glad to take suggestions. Okay, so now that's done. Okay, now we're going to put this on the top, but we're going to use dimensionals this time. I'm going to put three. this all to the left there. Right in the middle. No, nope, I'm going to go back and forth, so I should have just stuck with good enough. Good. Okay. So now that's on. And then we're going to pop up our pumpkin. And I'm just going to put two on him. You could probably put one on him, but I don't want him to come off. There we go. He looks so cute. All right. And then for the final touch, I'm using some black and white gingham ribbon. And I'm just going to tie a small bow. Now, if you didn't want to do the Velcro dots, you could tie this ribbon around and tie a bow at the side and just have the Velcro dots go on either side so it can run freely underneath. But... I like the Velcro. People don't have to worry about retying it so that it looks nice again after they open it. A little bit more over here. I got 
glue on these, I think. Unfortunate. Ripping it. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to get some glue dots and I'm going to stick it right there. Let me see if I can just do this without using the take your pick tool because it always gets stuck on my hand when I try to get it off the take your pick tool. I'm going to put two, one side by side, and then I'm just going to stick it right next to the circle. There we go. And one thing I did forget is I used a light mossy meadow blend to color in the stem. And of course you could always use add Wink of Stella glitter Wink of Stella glitter or let's put a line still on. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use these in color jewels and I'm gonna use the evening evergreen one, one of the little tiny ones. I'm just gonna put it at the base of the stem, give it a little sparkle. Okay, so um, I wanted to just show you some of the things that will fit in. So, of course, the Reese's Peanut Butter Pumpkin. You can fit two Twix. The Peanut Butter Pumpkin will only fit one because it's a weird shape. So there's two Twix bars will fit in nicely. Um, two Kit Kats because I believe they can stack, but let's just see. Yeah, two Kit Kats will fit. I only have one Snickers bar, but yeah, two Snickers bars or Milky Ways or Three Musketeers will fit. And then these Twizzlers are weird. I got these from the dollar store, so I mean, it will still fit, but I don't know if they ever were like that before with so much wrapping on there. But, and they will fit in even with all that wrapping squished. So that's all the stuff that you can fit, and I'm sure there's many more things. You could always wrap some candy corn in there or some um, other kind of loose candy, too. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos. So please uh, subscribe if you're not, and hit the like button if you like this project. And I will be back on Wednesday. I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.